having a lot of water. Hare Krishna. Drink the water. You want water? Drink water. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so anyway, um, I'm just sitting here thinking that people have so many material desires and, you know, for what it's worth, material energy, interacting with the material energy, becoming infatuated with this material energy by way of lust, anger, or greed causes us to take rebirth and rebirth and rebirth for the fulfillment of our desires. Because not everything's available to you in this life. Some things you're going to get in a future time. And this lifespan is not enough to get that. But here's some hints and clues. Coming from the teachings of the Acharyas. That basically explain that all of these material elements. Fire, earth, water, air. Are simply permutations or transformations of one element called ether or akasha. So this etheric element is a gross material element, but our senses are so dull that we can't even directly perceive ether. The only way you're really going to perceive ether is by studying how sound moves, because sound doesn't move through air, it moves through ether. How you know that is because there are sound waves in outer space coming off the stars. I touched on this information previously, but there's sound waves all throughout the etheric vacuum of space you can't pick them up until that air interacts with your air drums and that's why ether is such an all-pervading element so if you would like to manipulate this material world what you have to do is learn how to manipulate ether because by way of ether you could transform anything into anything you when your mother comes home she'll arrange for you to eat all right Okay. I don't like it. I ain't all ready spaghetti out of my dad's. Alright. Well, your dad made some spaghetti and you'll get to eat that when mommy comes home, okay? Alright. Yeah, so I'm watching my friends' kids. Um, so okay. with this I need you to go in the room, okay? Thanks. Yeah, so with this etheric element, the reason why I'm bringing this up. I've been chanting Hare Krishna now about two years, so I'm, meaning I started chanting Hare Krishna back in 2010. But when I say I started chanting, I started chanting in 2013, started chanting like 16 rounds a day. 16 rounds a day takes a person about two hours altogether. You know, if you do it all at once, it's going to take you about two hours. And it harkens to mind the practice of the martial artists. I used to watch the Kung Fu movies every Saturday at three o'clock. And these guys basically turn into monks. They surrendered their whole life to their sifu, their spiritual master. These guys were working as menial laborers. They would just be chopping wood and carrying smoky fires and, and dead animals and making food or whatever, whatever they did to please their sifu, their kung fu master. And for eight hours a day, these guys would be training in martial arts. And even at that young age, I would say to myself, Dad, these guys don't got a life. They don't got kids. They don't got a wife. They don't have a job. Like, all they're doing is practicing kung fu with this wooden dummy. And now that I'm into Krishna consciousness, I see, like, for example, if you're going to chant for eight hours a day, that's 64 rounds. You know, 64 is a divine number because 64 is a digital number. 64 times 2, 128. Now, once we start talking about 128, we're talking about encryption codes for security software layers. And then once we start talking about 256, which is 128 times 2, we start talking about the amount of memory that it takes for Microsoft XP to run as an operating system. And when we start talking about 512 and 1028 and all of that stuff, we're talking about gigabytes and megahertz, everything's digital. But if you take that number 64, which chanting eight hours a day would give you, well, you take your DNA. Your DNA is broken down into four letters. Those four letters can be transmuted eight times, bringing you to a total of 64. So this number eight, eight is the foundation of the computer world. Anybody who's in my age group in their 40s or so, they remember back in the days, the first computers that came out was 8-bit and 16-bit. So we, you could see... <clears throat> that even computer technology graduates so does spiritual technology so this number 64 is very important will bring you to chanting the holy names of the lord 64 times listen 
this thing is just unlimited science. But the reason why I'm connecting that to chanting is because when one chants, you chant to arrive at the supreme goal. Not all of us are going to get at the supreme goal at exactly the same time. Some of us are going to go faster. Some of us are going to go slower. But along the way, there are innumerable valuable treasures that one can pick up. A great example of that is thousands of millions of years ago, the demigods and the demons were at war. The demons gained the upper hand. Demigods felt lost. Their libido was down. Their energy was down. Their will to live was down. They were just drained. The demons were whooping their butt. And these demigods, they then approached Vishnu at the ocean. They went to the shores of the ocean of milk. Approached Vishnu for his mercy. Vishnu said, listen, this pendulum swings back and forth. Right now it's the demon's time to rock out. And you know I'm fair to everybody, so I'm specially inclined towards my devotees, and I'm going to give you some good advice. Call a truce with these demons, and go ahead with them, and churn the milky ocean. This milky ocean, there's a mountain there called Mount Sumeru. You will need a snake. You will need a rope to churn this mountain, this giant snake called Vasuki. Anyway, the whole process was... As explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, as they were churning this milky ocean, so many gifts were coming out the ocean. The powers to healing, long life, wealth, good fortune, elephants that dealt with power, nagas that dealt with power and wealth. Like so many good things were coming out of the ocean. And Vishnu said, don't stop. Don't stop and take those prizes. Keep going till you get to the Amrita. The Amrita is at the bottom of this ocean, this milky ocean. This Amrita, Amrut. A means against or without. Mirt means death. So Amrta means the nectar of immortality. That was the whole goal for the demigods to get their hands on the nectar of immortality. All of these prizes were coming out. Now a person like me, who's much, much lower on the level, I might be tempted during chanting, I might discover that I have a secret hidden power or a secret ability to manifest money out of the air or beautiful women, whatever. These things are real. These are real powers, yogic principles. And as we're chanting, a lot of these things come to us. We don't discuss them. There's so many things that can be achieved by this chanting process. And we're understanding that as we're chanting, because this Hare Krishna mantra is a spiritual mantra, it comes from the spiritual platform down. So the first thing it's going to affect is your what? Your false ego. Then after this mantra affects your false ego, it's going to affect your intelligence. Then after it affects your intelligence, it will affect your mind. Now, once we pass that stage, we're going down into the gross material elements. The first element that this mantra affects once it comes down into the gross material strata is ether. Meaning, if you chant this Hare Krishna mantra faithfully, without offense, one actually can achieve the power to manipulate ether. And if you can manipulate ether, look how Nas affected the whole world by one song called ether like yo i mean i get goosebumps when i think about ether how monumental that was i mean consider let's look at the rap history for a minute it was around 2000 i was living in the bronx chilling with my ex-girl tifa i'm a queen's cat you know what i'm saying i got pride in my borough at that time 50 cent was just coming out he had just got shot his bullet holes were still fresh so he wasn't really repping Queens hard yet. G-Unit ain't take over yet. It was the era of Rockefeller Records. Harlem and Brooklyn was smashing the musical world. Jay-Z was everywhere. You know what I'm saying? He had the takeover. Now I'm from Queens. I got pride. I don't like seeing people from my borough getting bombed on. And he was bombing on Nas. And he was showing his cojones. Yo, dogs. When that song Ether came out, everything changed. You could say what you want. Oh, Jay-Z won the battle. He signed Nas. He made Nas into his son. Yeah, but Ether is immortal. You can't, that, that song right there is going down in the annals of rap history. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is one song, Ether, could change your reality when it comes to music. Can you imagine what the element of Ether can do? The element of Ether can transform each one of these elements to your usage. So I just want to share that with you. Continue the process of engaging this Hare Krishna mantra because the power is unlimited. It comes from the spiritual world. And then you can use it in the material world to get things done. My suggestion, whatever you get, whatever gifts, 
whatever value you get out of this mantra treat it like fumes coming out the back of the exhaust and take those fumes transform them back into gasoline and put them back into the engine and that way you will get more and more and more whatever you get from the lord give it back to him because you're not the owner of that anyway down to your five senses you don't own your five senses the five senses belong to someone called Trishikesha. it means the owner of the senses so any enjoyment i want for myself i'm just fooling myself all things are supposed to be done for the sake of the supreme purusha the supreme enjoyer so i'm gonna leave you with that and enjoy your little more memorial day weekend and just remember as you practice these spiritual things there's going to be gifts i would suggest you don't stop there though go for the ultimate goal Hare Krishna.